for example, in the Belgian authorities who had a very liberal policy, once they were inside the country, once they had crossed the border, and many could cross the border because the border region between Germany and Belgium is a very hilly one, hilly one. so it's easy, it's rather easy uh, to trespass the green border without being noticed. So the Belgian authorities had a very liberal policy once they were in the country. That was because there was pressure of public opinion, also because the political elite considered it improper to send people back to Nazi Germany. But what you see on the other hand is that they put pressure on the Nazi authorities not to, send, not to let people anymore get to their border. So it put pressure on the Nazi authorities to stop Cuban refugees from getting close to the German-Belgian border if they didn't have a visa. So they subcontracted, they tried to subcontract their immigration policy to the Nazi authorities. And the Nazi authorities conceded to that. They agreed to them, they, they uh, sent out instructions in October, 30, no, October November 38 to arrest anybody in the western uh, border region, so not only German Belgium, but the German France, German Swiss, because there was pressure from all these countries to arrest anybody who tried, who was in that border region without having any legitimate reason to be there. And all those people were sent to concentration camps. It's one of the very strange uh, elements of, it's, a, it's an illustration, it's an illustration of the chaotic way of policy making in Nazi Germany. So we get pressure from outside, they change this policy, but of course that policy is still to get rid of all those Jews. So they have to find other ways to get rid of them. They can send them to Eastern Europe because there the pressure of those authorities didn't matter anymore, they didn't have any diplomatic, political or economic influence um, those countries. Uh, so it was much easier to do what the, the Germans could do much easier what they wanted with the Jews and send them over to the East. There were no restraints to that. Another way to get rid of them was to send them on ships, so which were called so called which are so called Jewish ships, which were uh, big, which could be big German vessels, uh, on which they put loads of German Jews who pay for a ticket round trip, because the shipping company should earn off uh, any two, so they paid a trip, for example, to Cuba. If they couldn't disembark there, okay, they went back to Germany. But they paid anyway the round trip. But that was the change in policy of Nazi Germany in order not to offend uh, its rich, powerful neighbors, they decided to send them over the seas. But of course this created problems in Latin America where suddenly a ship arrived with a few hundred refugees, so they were not so keen to accept all those people. The only, way, the only place which remained open until the outbreak of the war is Shanghai. Shanghai the city in China, which had been divided by the uh, Western powers, that was the only place where Jews were still could still disembark without any problem. That was the only place in the whole world elsewhere they still could disembark, but illegally uh, or with bribes or with other means. But it was much more difficult. So the the deadlock, the impasse in which the Jewish refugees found. Uh, is also a symptom of the change on a global scale of immigration policy. You see here in Western Europe in the 1920s and 30s, you see a protectionist policy being developed. It's linked to the democratization, democratization of society, to the growing power of labor uh, in, 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 in countries, so they want their labor market to be to be protected. Uh, it's also part of nationalism. Uh, in other countries, like in Latin America, you see also in the 1930s an, a protectionist immigration policy being developed, uh, mostly based on ethnic quota in line of the American example. The American example already of the early 1920s, when America protected it, it itself against further influx of immigrants with a very strong cultural selection. So they mostly wanted to have Anglo-Saxon immigrants, uh, but Mediterranean uh, Russians were much less welcome. 
So this is uh, this whole American, so as well North as South America, uh, has evolved into this whole continent has evolved into a protectionist country. So it was not somewhere open by the end of the 1930s. Uh, this is linked to nation building, uh, to countries trying to mold its population and to limit immigration from certain re regions. Uh, so it's a global process of, uh, of nation building, which you see reflected in immigration policy at that time, and of which the great victims were the Jewish refugees who had to leave, but who had no place to go.